few weeks ago, my internet went out. I have a good provider and they found a tech who was willing to work overtime, so he finally got me up and running. But I was shut off from the world for about 12 hours. I missed a full day's work. I spent a lot of that time reflecting on how dependent I've become on my Wi-Fi connection. Research, Zoom calls, evening entertainment, podcast downloads, and endless emails. It was only 12 hours. 12 days would have been a serious problem. 12 weeks would be a catastrophe. Over the last year, I've seen the supply chain stuttering in all sorts of ways. My local Walmart was instructive. Toilet paper vanished immediately. Within a week or two, every bicycle in the store was gone and the racks remained empty for months. Camping gear too. Then random items all over the store started disappearing. Underwear and socks went missing for weeks. Who hoards underwear? Suffice it to say that ever since March 2020, I've been thinking a lot about the miracle of systems here in the United States and about how vulnerable we are if these systems begin to break down. It's shocking for an American to see empty shelves at the local Kroger store. At just about the same time that I was freaking out with no internet, a ransomware attack shut down one of our most important oil pipelines. People panicked, of course. We've now been trained to panic. Drivers lined up at gas stations while prices spiked. For us elders, it was a flashback to the Jimmy Carter years when gas shortages were a common thing. Colonial Pipeline paid hackers $4.4 million to unlock its systems and data. Sure, why not? It's not like anybody else is watching. But wait, last weekend one of the largest meat processors in the country got hit. Also with ransomware. Also by Russians. One-fifth of U.S. beef production just stopped in its tracks. One burger out of every five. Hackers can do that. Hackers can do things I'm afraid to think about. What's next? Which system we all take for granted is about to freeze up? Wednesday, it was revealed that New York's Metropolitan Transit Authority was hacked in April of this year, apparently for the third time. Everything is connected now, and everybody is dependent upon God knows how many computer-driven systems. My paycheck comes from Google AdSense, which is probably one of the most secure systems on Earth, but the money goes to my bank. Who's watching the code on that end? When Donald Trump founded the Space Force in December of 2019, a lot of people were scratching their heads. Some folks thought this was evidence that government has been hiding UFOs and that we were gearing up for invasions from other worlds. I think we're probably the only game in the galaxy. So I assumed that the Space Force was mostly about the swarm of satellites now circling the globe making sure we can protect the ones we depend on and knock out the satellites our enemies depend on. You know, if it comes to that. It's busy up there, kind of like this. At last count, there are about 2,700 functioning satellites in orbit and just as many that are defunct. SpaceX has 1,500 up already and plans to add 12,000 more by 2028. Amazon aims to do something similar. The space we're talking about is the layer of darkness surrounding our own planet, from about 100 miles up to 20,000 miles up, all connected to computer networks, which means they can all be hacked, including the ones we need to win wars. The Air Force is so nervous about this that they challenged hackers last year just so they could see if there were vulnerabilities. Spoiler alert, there were. I myself was hoping Trump would give us a cyberspace force as well, a nerd army of super hackers defending our interests from secret basements all over the country. Maybe I've seen too many movies with disheveled geniuses pulling international strings while eating cold pizza. But if it's possible for our hackers to keep tabs on their hackers, then I hope to God we're doing so. Almost as frightening is that so many private networks contain so much of our information. Remember when Target was hacked in 2013, compromising tens of millions of Americans? How about the Equifax breach three years later? 
Hackers access the personal data of 145 million consumers in the U.S., including their social security numbers, credit card information, birth dates, addresses, even their driver's license numbers. That's like most of the functioning grown-ups. I doubt that I know anybody whose bank account numbers are not on an Amazon server somewhere. This is big stuff. The degree to which we've all become dependent on computers is really frightening. Beyond the 26 bucks cash I have here at home, my entire life savings exists only on computer servers over which I have no control whatsoever. I don't even want to get into the real possibility that our whole electrical grid could be taken out by a few well-placed electromagnetic pulses. Apparently, China is working harder than anybody else to make this a very doable thing. But I'll get into that in my upcoming series about China. These recent hacks make me think that the guys living in armed camps in the Ozarks with 10 years of food and 20,000 rounds of ammo might not be paranoid throwbacks after all. It might be that these folks have been paying a hell of a lot better attention to our modern day vulnerabilities than I have. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Oh, and if you were part of our recent fundraiser for the orphanage in Uganda, watch for a video later today updating that situation. I'm proud of you guys. I really am. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and then click the little bell to get notifications.